Hello and welcome to another season of Christmas that uh, we are enjoying. In a few days, we shall celebrate Christmas. And today we are going to learn more about Christmas and the gift of Christmas that our Lord gave us. A gift of His own Son, His only begotten Son, as a Christmas gift, as our Savior, that He can save us from death, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. What a wonderful feeling at this time of the year that we celebrate Christmas every year just to remind ourselves of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ coming for that purpose only that we may have life and life more abundantly so that we may know about Christmas. We must first of all go to the history and see the promise that God gave when Adam and Eve fell from the Garden of Eden when they sinned so that you may know what the Lord said and what happened so that he may give us a promise of a Savior, the promise of a Christmas like nothing before. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. It's a wonderful feeling knowing that we are going to celebrate with the knowledge of what happened that we may have Christmas. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that your presence be with us, O oh Father. Thy anointing be upon us, O oh Lord God, as you speak to us today about Christmas, about your love, your love for us, O oh Father God. Although they sinned to Adam and Eve, you still loved us so much that you promised that you're going to give us a Savior, a Christmas gift of your own Son, your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you because you're going to give us and teach us the word today that we may know exactly what happened so that our Lord would come as a Christmas gift for us all, that death will no longer reign in our lives, and that we should have life, that we may have life, and life more, much more abundantly, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, as we celebrate. We thank you for your presence, O oh Father. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So the Bible teaches us that Adam and Eve, when they were put in the Garden of Eden, the Lord told them not to touch or eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they should not eat of it. They could eat any, eat any other fruit of any other tree in that garden, but not that particular tree. You are not supposed to touch it. And the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, the Lord took the man, Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Don't forget that. When you will eat of it, you will surely die. That means before they would have lived forever. But if they would eat, they would die. Don't forget that because you're coming back to that. Chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made, the serpent itself. And he said to the woman, the serpent said to the woman, Has God said you shall not eat of 
in the tree of the garden? No, the, 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 the serpent, the snake itself is asking uh, if, talking to the woman, if. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit from the trees of the garden, but from the tree, from, but from the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you will not eat of it, nor will you touch it, or else you will die. That's what the Lord had said. You see how what Satan now comes to do. Then to, uh, verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. You surely will not die. The Lord says you'll die. And then the serpent tells the woman, No, you'll not die. For God knows that on the day you eat of it, your eyes will, will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This is what the, the, the devil does to us, just telling us lies every time. All over, and, and lying and lying. Verse 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good, it was good for food, that it was pleasing to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she gave to her husband with her, and he ate. See the action they took? So they sinned against God. They ate because the devil, Satan himself, in the form of a serpent, told them. Verse 7, Then the eyes of both were opened. Their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked immediately. So they sewed fig leaves together and made covering for themselves. Then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave me, you gave to me with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Started blaming the wife. The woman who gave me, gave it to me and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, what have you done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord said to the serpent, Listen, because the serpent deceived this couple, deceived the woman. The Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all livestock and above every beast of the field. You will go on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Listen to this. This is very, very important. Verse 15. This is where the promise of Christmas is. So the Lord was is so merciful. He's full of love. Even after these people sinning, he had to, dare, he had to do this. He, he said this. I will put enmity he will put hatred between you and the woman. He was talking to the serpent. And between your offspring and, and her offspring. He will bruise your head. That means he will crush Satan. And you will bruise his heel. And Satan will bruise his heel. Now, who are we talking about here? The Lord was referring to our Savior, who would come on Christmas Day, to be born on Christmas Day, so that by his crucifixion and death, Satan would have nothing to do with us anymore. Because that sin, every sin, we shall be forgiven if we are washed by the blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is crushing Satan who wanted us to, who wanted to kill us and die and, and destroy us. But, Jesus, but the Lord would send Jesus Christ as the seed of a woman that he would come and crush Satan, crush his head, bruise his head, he said. Although then he would bruise, Satan would bruise his heel. That means he would try to destroy the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? No. This is trying to tell us that it doesn't matter what. Adam and Eve had learned by painful experience that because, because God is holy and hates sin, he must punish sinners. The rest of the book of Genesis recounts painfully stories of lives ruined as a result of the fall. Disobedience is sin, as you all know. They disobeyed God. And it breaks fellowship with God. But fortunately, we are fortunate. When we disobey, like Adam and Eve, God is willing to forgive us and to restore our relationship with him. That's why he had to promise for a savior. Because they sinned, but he was ready to forgive. Hallelujah. Satan is our enemy, as we all know. He will do anything he can, he, can, he can get us into following his evil and deadly path. The phrase, you will strike his heel, where the Lord says he will strike his heel, refers to Satan's repeated attempts to defeat Christ during his life on earth. Bruising the heel of our Lord is trying to destroy the work of our Lord Jesus Christ while he was walking on this earth. But he told, he, he, he told the serpent, but he will crush your head. The seed of a woman, our Lord Jesus Christ, would crush his head. That, that, that foreshadows Satan's defeat when Christ rose from the dead. When Christ rose from the dead, that means death, like the Bible says, death has no sting anymore. Hallelujah. A strike on the hill is not deadly. He would try to destroy the work of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Satan himself. That is what is referred as he will strike the hill. But a blow to the head is already, is already God is, and God is revealing his plan to defeat Satan. When he's talking about crushing his head, it is deadly. That means Satan would be totally destroyed because he won't have any power anymore because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from death. That means, you remember they were told whoever eats of that fruit will die. But now Jesus Christ has come because of shedding blood on the cross. He becomes our savior. That means we shall have life and life more abundantly. Only Jesus Christ could save us by his blood. And that's why a promise of Christmas came on that day when he was told, he will bruise your head and you will Bruce his heel. He will try to destroy the work of our Lord, but he will crush, but our Lord will crush him. That is how he said this. That by receiving Jesus Christ, death has no power anymore on us. That's why the Bible says that he loved us so much that he gave a promise of a seed of a woman who would come and crush Satan. And the Bible says in the book of John 3.16, For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. 
that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son to come and crush Satan. Take away the keys from him and say it's finished. And if it's Satan, hallelujah, so that whoever believes in him Whoever believes in our Lord Jesus Christ now should not perish. You cannot, you cannot perish, but have everlasting life. That means we have everlasting life because of the crushing of Satan. And the Lord said, it is finished. And he took away the keys from him. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. You are not going to perish, but have everlasting life. Christians don't die. They just sleep. They sleep. They don't die. That's why the Bible asks, death, where is your sting? Because death is taken away by our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. The promise of Christmas that Jesus would come, the seed of a woman would come to crush Satan. A promise of Christmas. And that's why Jesus came on Christmas Day. Purposely to come to crush the head of Satan. So that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting. Just like before the fall of Adam and Eve, they were never to die. So we too, who believe in Christ, who have received Christ as Lord and Savior, shall not die, but have everlasting life. Because our Lord loved us so much, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. For God so loved us. He loved, although Adam and Eve sinned, but his love is, an, is unconditional. It's called a gap love, unconditional love. His love, you, you cannot even explain it. That he even forgives the sinners and he forgives us and he, he gives his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God loved. So this was all through love that he made us not to die anymore but to have everlasting life in Jesus' mighty name. What a wonderful world that we know why Christmas is all about. It's not only eating and drinking, but knowing that our Lord came to crush Satan, to bruise his head as it was promised. Chapter, uh, uh, chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 15. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received him, as many that will receive him, even today, to them he gave them the right to become children of God. We have been given the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. To those who believe in his name. So we are called to believe in his name. And then we shall be called the children of the Most High God. So as many as will receive them will still receive him. <laughs> you are one of them. If you receive him, there's no death for you, but there is everlasting life. Praise the name of the Lord. This is for us. This is a promise. That that's why Christmas came. That we may know that our Lord came to destroy the works of Satan himself. That we may receive him and believe in him. That is our Christmas. Hallelujah. We celebrate on daily basis. 
that we know you are not going to die, but have everlasting life. Because of the promise of Christmas in the book of Genesis by our Lord. That the seed of a woman, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and offspring. He will bruise your head and you, and you will bruise his heel. So, from now on, it's for us to know the meaning of Christmas and why our Lord came. And there was a promise of our Savior that our Lord told the serpent that he would be bruised when he comes. The seed of a woman, the same woman that he deceived, Satan. The same woman that he deceived. A seed of a woman, the same woman, a woman would bruise his head and would destroy him. Praise the name of the Lord. So remember that Jesus is both God and man. He is the only way to the Father. And since he came to do that, now we have a way to our Father. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way. He was promised to come to bruise the, the, the head of Satan himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to me. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one will come to the Father except through Jesus himself. Praise the name of the Lord. So I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is our path to the Father. We believe in him. He takes us to the Father. He presents us to the Father. That means he's the way. As the truth, his realty of all God's promises. He's the realty. He's the real deal. He is the one of every promise that our, our Father gave. And that, that's why he is the truth. Whatever he says, and the truth that we are told, he would, he would come. And when he comes, He'll show us the way. And, and, and he is the life, as he says. So he joins his divine life to, our, to, our, to, to, to ours, both now and eternally. Now, because of his blood, we have become family. We become family. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ and all those that believe in him, we become family. So that means now and eternally, we are together in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, his blood has brought us to the Lord, God the Father. His shedding of the blood, the suffering and dying. His blood has brought us. Now, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 11 to 13 says, Therefore, remember, listen to this, listen to this. Therefore, remember that once you were once Gentiles in the flesh. Remember once before we, we received Christ. Before we received Christ, we were just Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision made by the flesh or by hands. That means we were carnal. We were filled with carnality, but not the Spirit of God. Before, remember, we were Gentiles in the flesh. We were just not in the family of our Lord. But now, since we have, we believe in Christ, we are in his family. Verse 12 says that, that at that time you are without Christ. Before, we were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the, from the covenant of promise. That means we were not in the covenant. We were aliens, not in the covenant, until we believed the time that we believed in Jesus Christ, because he says, to those that believe in him, we will be called the sons of God. So before we received him, we were aliens and strangers to the, 
to the covenant of promise, to this covenant, the promise that our Lord gave. Having no hope, we do not have hope. And without God in the world, and we do not have God in this world. Hallelujah. But now, praise the name of the Lord, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off, we who are once far off, oh my Lord, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been brought near to our Father by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that washed away our sins. The blood that washed away all our sins. And we've been made family. So now we can sing and say, we are family with our Lord Jesus Christ. We are family because the blood has brought us together in Jesus' mighty name. What a wonderful feeling to know that because he came and bruised the head of Satan and by his blood, the blood is shed. Yes, washed away all our sins. He came purposely to die for us. He came purposely to die for us that we may be family in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, how, how grateful we are just to know that we've been called the children of the Most High God. Because on Christmas Day, our Lord came that we may receive salvation. That is the meaning of Christmas and the promise of our Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May you enjoy yourself this Christmas knowing why Jesus came and why Christmas was foretold in the book of Genesis. And I know you'll enjoy yourself and your families in a big way, in a great way, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor and all the praises. Thank you, Father. Bless everyone in this Christmas as long as they continue to receive from you and know that the promises of giving our Savior were done many, many years before. Thank you, Father. Give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Shalom and shalom. Amen and amen.